Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. This is going to be part two of our Jellyfin guide. In the first part, we went ahead and actually did the installation process to get Jellyfin up and running, uh, did the initial setup on our web portal, and then went and created some libraries and I showed you some additional tips and tricks depending on your setup. And that video was really long, so going forward, these parts are going to be much shorter, little bite-sized segments. So in this one, what we're going to be doing is talking about hardware acceleration and media codecs. But first, I just wanted to mention, this video is brought to you by Linode, the largest independent cloud service provider out there today. With Linode, you can host your Jellyfin server, you can host a Plex media server, basically anything that can run on a Linux server, you can run on Linode. With Linode, you have a wide range of Linux server distributions to choose from, including Arch Linux, Ubuntu, Believe or not Gentoo and many more. In addition, they just have a ton of easy to install server applications, fantastic customer support, and if you go ahead and use the link in the description, you can get a $100 60 day credit to go ahead and try out Linode today. So in the simplest terms possible, what happens when you might want hardware acceleration is if you're streaming a format out to a client that does not support that format. When that happens, what your server is going to do is run FFmpeg to go ahead and convert the media to a format that the client side will support. And by client side, I mean something like your Roku TV, your Android phone, your web browser, whatever you're trying to stream media off of. Now, if you do not have hardware acceleration enabled, what this is going to do is heavily depend on your CPU to do most of the work and depending on your server, this might not be something you want to do. So again, depending on your hardware, one of the things you might want to do is go ahead and enable hardware acceleration. With this, instead of using the CPU, it's gonna be able to put a lot of the slack on the GPU to do some of the heavy lifting. And with that, to actually go ahead and enable hardware acceleration, what you're gonna to want to do is log into Jellyfin, go to your admin dashboard, and then from there, you're gonna to want to go to your playback settings. Now, up in the top, you're gonna to see a little drop down, and what you're gonna to want to do from there is select the proper hardware acceleration option for the hardware that you happen to be using. Now, this is gonna vary wildly, depending on if you have a NVIDIA GPU in your system, an AMD GPU, or if you're on something like a Raspberry Pi. Now, below that option, it says some additional work may be required. So what you're going to want to do is head over to the wiki and find the hardware that you're going to be using and follow the steps there depending on what you're actually doing this on and what GPU you have. Now just to give you some examples of this extra work, uh, let's say you're doing this on a Raspberry Pi. What you're going to want to do is go ahead, open up the terminal, and make sure you give the proper user group permission. So what you're going to want to do is sudo usermod dash lowercase a capital G video jellyfin and then do a sudo system c tl restart jellyfin. And then on the Raspberry Pi from there, what you're going to want to do is edit your boot configuration. And to do this, you're going to go sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot txt. And then you're going to want to go ahead and add a line so you could give some dedicated GPU memory. So you input GPU underscore MEM equals 320. And then from there, you could do another command just to verify you have the proper GPU and CPU memory split. And you could do that with a VC gen CMD command. And then you could see the rest of that command on the screen here. Now, another more common thing is if you have a NVIDIA card in your system and you need to use the NVIDIA NVENC. And this should generally be a little bit easier than doing it with a Raspberry Pi. You just need to make sure you have the proper NVIDIA drivers on your system. But again, I'm gonna be linking to that wiki page with all the information depending on the hardware that you're using. So you could follow the steps there. If I went over every single possible option, this would be a 45 minute video. And if you are using Docker, I'm gonna go ahead and link to a video down below that will help you enable hardware acceleration. Now with that, the ultimate goal that you should have is to have a vast majority of the media on your Jellyfin server to already be in the proper format. If your media is completely compatible with the client side, your server is not going to need to load FFmpeg at all, resulting in a near complete elimination of your server load. So with that, what we're going to do is jump onto the computer real quick, check out a chart of all the supported codecs, and then I'm going to show you some examples of some media streaming that isn't supported. We're going to convert it over to a supported format, stream it again so we can see the results. 
All right, so here we are on the Jellyfin Wiki. Over here, I actually have my media server loaded up with HTOP running so we could kind of monitor some of the performance. Now, going over here, they give you some great information on some of the supported codecs and the client side devices. Now, up here, if you just read through this, it says some of the things I've already said. The goal is to direct play all media. If for some reason the media you're playing is incompatible, it will use FFmpeg to convert the media. And down here is a lovely table with all of that. So here we have all the different codecs, all the different client side devices, and a green check indicates that that format is compatible. Now, just looking at this, we can tell the one that goes straight across is that H.264 8-bit is compatible with just about everything from your Chrome web browser all the way over to your Android TV. So generally, it's always a safer bet to have your media converted to H.264 when you go ahead and load it onto your Jellyfin server. And I'm going to show you an example why that would be the case real quick. So I'm going to go over here to my kids' movies library. And if we look down here, let's say Toy Story 4, for example, you could actually see the format right here. So it says video, this is H.264, so we're probably going to have a good time playing that. But if I go back here and I go to Frozen 2, for example, you can see that this is MP or MPEG-4. And if I go over here and I go over to MPEG-4, you can see that they are not compatible with Firefox, which is my current client side. So if I go ahead and just play this without hopefully getting my uh, channel deleted here, you can see if we look over at HTOP, the uh, CPU is really firing up here. Now you gotta think with how hard my CPU is working right now, this footage that is playing is uh, 480p. So if this was even 720p, 1080p, anything higher, this would just be completely maxed out and it might even cause some stuttering. So what we're gonna do real quick is actually go ahead and convert this to the proper media codec. So to do that, first I'm gonna go into my terminal here. What we could do actually is make this a little bit bigger so you all can see it. And let's hit F10 to quit out of HTOP. And what I'm gonna do real quick is actually go over to where this media is currently stored. And if you went ahead and watched that Jellyfin video that I did the first part, you should have a fairly good understanding of how I have this all laid out and organized. So now I'm in the kids. If I go ahead and do LS, you're going to see a huge list of all the kids movies I have on this server. And what we're going to be manipulating here is Frozen 2. And you can see it is an AVI file and it's the improper codec. So what I'm going to do is give this a quick copy. And with that copied, I just went ahead and did a quick Google search and found a FFmpeg command that we're going to go ahead and use to convert this media over. So what we're going to do, go ahead over here, let's type in FFmpeg-i, paste in our file name, so that's frozen to AVI. And now let's go ahead, I know I don't have this, so we're going to try this command right here. Give that a copy and paste this on in there. And now I'm gonna change this to the proper file naming scheme that we discussed in the first part of the series. There we go, and hopefully if I'm lucky, I'm gonna hit enter and this is going to work perfectly fine, which it looks like it has. It's going at uh, 120 frames per second. So uh, five times speed, this is a like an hour and a half movie. So probably about 20 minutes or so, this should be about done. So I will be right back. So it looks like this has completed uh, moderately successfully. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna ls real quick and go ahead and look up to make sure that the files are there. So we'll go over to Frozen. We can see both of the Frozen 2s here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this file. And you could obviously do this through however you're managing your actual server files. I think this is the command. I hope this is the command. Okay, now let's see if it's gone. Yep, now we only have the MP4 of Frozen. So what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna head over to my Jellyfin server. This technically doesn't exist anymore, so we're gonna go over to our admin dashboard. I'm gonna go over to my libraries, go under my kids' movies and scan that library real quick and hit refresh to look for those new and updated files. So now if we go over to our home and let's head over to our kids' movies and go down to Frozen 2 right here, it should say the proper formatting, which is now H.264. So with that, let's go ahead and fire up HTOP once more and then monitor our system when we actually go ahead and play back this movie. So let's hit play here. 
And now, while it plays, you're going to notice that the server is basically doing nothing. It's just sending out the file and I am completely handling this on my client side. And this is obviously the most ideal situation at this point, other than maybe the fact that this is a 480p video, but it's a kid's movie. I'm not watching this, even though I would be lying if I told you that I haven't watched this at least three times at this point. So again, check all the devices that you plan on streaming to and line it up to that chart that we looked at. Generally, the codec that has the most support overall is that H.264 8-bit, but if you're only streaming to one or two different devices, just make sure you try to follow media codecs that will be completely compatible with those devices. With all that said, that was hardware acceleration and media codecs. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell for our next part of this series of Jellyfin Guides. And if you didn't watch the first part and you're interested in setting up your very own Jellyfin home media server, make sure you click the little I up above or you go down to the description and watch that video. With that said, I would love to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Sledge Hammer, Phil Matt, Kyle, Timo, Anthony, and Chris Curtis. Thank you guys so much and thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members for supporting the channel. If you like this content, make sure you subscribe, ring that bell, like this video if you did, leave a comment with any questions, anything to add. If you're watching this, I'd recommend go down to the comments because chances are somebody smarter than me, somebody commented something, and I'm going to pin it. So go check down below this video. Everything we referenced will be in the description. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.